Hi there, my name is Marnie Clark and I'm a breast cancer coach. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do your own amazing lymphatic drainage massage on your upper body. I've got quite a few special techniques and tips in this video, including one that's not so well known that helps you take care of scarring. So if you're having problems with swelling or lymphedema after breast cancer surgery, be sure to stay with me to the end of this video so that you don't miss anything important. Quick question. Have you been through breast cancer and lost some lymph nodes during the surgery? Are you frustrated with how your body feels now? If so, let me know in the comments section below this video. I would love to hear from you. So, first of all, I want to teach you a little, a bit, a little bit about the lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system consists of ducts and lymphatic vessels which are located all through the body. Your lymphatic system is necessary for taking toxic substances and waste out of the tissues of your body. Think of it as the garbage collection service. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but it's exactly what it does. A healthy lymphatic system uses the natural movements of muscles to do this work. However, surgery, radiation, or other types of damage can cause fluids to build up in your lymphatic system and your lymph nodes a condition known as lymphedema. Your lymphatic system requires movement to work properly, whether by you moving your body or by breathing or by the lymphatic drainage massage I'm about to teach you. The lymphatic system needs help to get it moving fluids around the body, unlike your blood, which has your heart pumping away to move it around. If you have lymphedema, you have a couple of options. One is to pay someone to do what is called manual lymphatic drainage or MLD. These people are trained specialists and the gentle techniques they employ help to move lymphatic fluid around so the body can more easily get rid of accumulated fluids and detox. If you can afford that, this is the more relaxing way, that's for sure. But this video is for those who live in areas without these specialists. You ladies in small towns or rural areas where you can't easily get to an MLD specialist or for those who can't afford the service. So here's how it works. Lymphatic drainage massage gently stretches the skin and helps move fluid away from an area that is swollen to areas of the body where the lymphatic system is working better. Areas not affected by the surgery. So that means we will be moving fluid from the affected side to the unaffected side. It's a simple technique, very light pressure. I mean, just, you're just moving it like this. It's very different from deep tissue massage. It uses light pressure and gentle rhythmic strokes to help increase the flow of lymph. So here are five basic tips for doing lymphatic drainage massage on yourself. Number one. The way this works best is when you remember to do it. <laughs> it, is, it is best to do this on a daily basis, making it part of your self-care routine in the morning or the evening, whatever suits you best. Uh, number two, make sure you are comfortable for the routine. You can use pillows or a table to support an arm while you're um, doing this. It helps um, your shoulder and your arm to relax if you put it on a, on a pillow. Um, you can do this procedure while seated, lying down, or even standing up if you prefer, whatever works best for you. Number three, you are only using the lightest of pressure, just the weight of your hand and keeping your treating hand relaxed and soft. Use just enough pressure to gently stretch your skin as far as it naturally goes and then release the pressure and let the skin go back as it was. If you can feel your muscles underneath your fingers, you're using too much pressure. Just lighten up. Number four, rather than using your fingertips, you're using a flat hand, as I showed you, just a flat hand. This gives you more contact with the skin to stimulate lymphatic vessels. And number five, generally you will be directing fluid away from the surgical sites and toward the areas of your body that have not been affected by surgery. Okay, that's it. Here are the don'ts. And that's important too, you have to know what what not to do. So don't strain your shoulders, your neck, your arm, your wrist, your hand while you're performing self lymphatic drainage massage. Never cause yourself any pain. Avoid any areas that are infected. If you have a catheter port, avoid bumping it. If you have any kind of suspected infection, please go see your doctor. So here we go. 
These techniques are from a manual lymphatic drainage specialist. They are tried and true. Number one, deep breathing to stimulate the lymphatic system. This is the first thing you're going to do. So you can do this anywhere, anytime, and it helps to get the lymphatic system moving. There are a lot of lymph nodes in the abdominal area, and this helps to activate them. So flat palms on the stomach, one on top of the other. This helps you to feel your stomach expand so you know you're being effective and you're going to be slightly resisting the expansion with your hands. Okay, ready? So slowly breathe in through your nose. Let that stomach push your hands out while slightly resisting that expansion. And you can change your position of your hands so that you're moving, uh, consider your stomach like a quadrant and, and uh, you know, breathing out slowly through your pursed lips when you're breathing out. But your stomach is flattening. You can move your hands from one quadrant to the other, as I said. So repeat that five times. So. So I won't do it five times, you get the idea. Number two is clearing the lymph nodes at the front of your neck. So you have lymph nodes in your neck just above your collarbone. So we're gonna start below your ears with your hands. Place the flats of both hands on either side of your neck just above your collarbone. Think of your hands as being glued to your skin here. So your fingers aren't sliding in this movement, just gently pulling. You're basically just doing large circles downward and inward toward the middle of your neck, gently stretching the skin as far as it naturally goes. And do that 10 or 15 times. All right, now I'm gonna get a bit of a pillow. This is, uh, we're gonna be working on the axillary lymph nodes here. Axillary, of course, means armpit. So this prepares the lymph nodes in your underarm known as your axillary lymph nodes. First, we'll start on the side not treated for cancer. So for me, that's on the, on the right. So starting on the non-treated side, putting your arm on a pillow or in a comfortable position. Hopefully you can see this okay. So that your arm's supported. So you put your opposite palm against your underarm on the side not treated for cancer, gently stretching the skin. You're making large circles. I'll, I'll raise my arm so you can see what that looks like. All right, large circles. Now, switch the pillow to the other side, do that same procedure on the other side. You're gently stretching the skin, large circles, do it 10 or 15 times. Now I'm gonna teach you how to massage your scar. So you're gonna need some essential oils for this. This isn't part of manual lymphatic drainage, but since most everyone has a scar to deal with, it's really a good thing to know. You can start this procedure around three weeks after the surgery and after all the staples and everything has been removed. Your scar uh, will probably feel sensitive, but massaging this area, especially using essential oils, will help reduce this problem and soften the scar and allow better circulation in the area. If anything hurts, back off. Never create pain while you're doing this. It doesn't matter if the scar is in your armpit or on your chest or on your back. This will definitely help or wherever the scar is, abdominal, you know, after reconstruction surgery. So as you can see, I've got a bowl here with an organic carrier oil in it. I've used hemp seed and three to four drops of each essential oil. I like to use cypress to include, uh, increase circulation, but other good oils to increase circulation are lemon, orange, grapefruit, and lemongrass. These will also help fight free radicals and bring oxygenation to the area. Another, other good oils that help scars to heal well are helichrysum, frankincense, geranium, carrot seed, lavender, cedarwood, tea tree, and patchouli. You don't need to use all of them, just use what you have. And after time, you'll develop a better idea of which ones are working best for you. For pain, you would use wintergreen, ginger, clove, peppermint, or lavender. Those all help to reduce pain and inflammation. So into this bowl with the organic carrier oil and the essential oils added. Got a few here, oops, knocked them over. <laughs> so you're gonna dip your fingers of the treating hand into the bowl and activate the oils just by doing this kind of a circular motion, sort of spreads them across your fingertips. So the flat tip of your 
oiled fingers, pressing firm but gently along the scar. You're going to do this in a zigzag pattern. Just do it a few times. Imagine my scars here. So, and now dipping your fingers again into the bowl, I'm going to do a circular pattern on that scar. You can do this with any scars that are feeling tight or stuck. Sometimes adhesions can occur underneath scars where the body is trying to repair itself, but causing problems with underlying connective tissue. This technique really helps um, that, and I found that doing this also helps to bring some of the sensation back to this, to this area as well, which is important. So now we're gonna be working on the upper chest. This step moves fluid up to the major lymph ducts in the neck from the upper chest. This is great for those who've had lumpectomy, mastectomy, or suffering from swelling, either full-blown lymphedema or minor swelling after surgery. So you're going to place your flat palm on your chest above the affected breast or scar and using several small strokes or circular strokes, whatever you like, massage up your chest to just above your collarbone. So you're stretching the skin as far as it naturally goes and then releasing. Obviously doing this without your clothes on is much more uh, beneficial for you. So you're going to do that 10 or 15 times, right? Now, we're going to re re prepare the groin nodes to recede, receive fluid, and uh, so I'm going to be standing up for this one. So this step helps to prepare the lymph nodes in your groin to receive the fluid. It's just performed on the side of your body that was treated for cancer. So you place the flats of your palms over the crease at the top of your leg, as if you were putting your hand in your pocket, kind of like that. So putting your hands in that one spot, use your fingertips to gently press in towards your body and then pull up. Repeat about 15 times. If you want to, you can do that on the other side as well. Now we'll be moving fluid from the upper arm to the groin. So this step directs the fluid from your upper arm down the side of your body to your groin on the affected side. So do this on both sides if you've had a bilateral mastectomy. So with a flat, relaxed palm, start at the underside of your upper arm, gently stretching the skin as far as it naturally goes, directing your pressure down the side of your body and down to the groin where you just worked. And then release. And you can do that about 15 times. And obviously you're gonna do the other side if you had a bilateral mastectomy. Now we'll be moving fluid from the chest to the groin. So this step uh, directs the fluid away from your lower chest, just below the breast to your groin. Do this step on the side of the body treated for cancer. It'll, um, uh, it'll be, it's a good thing to do, that's what I'm trying to say. So <laughs> place your fat palm, flat palm below the scar on your chest and gently stretch and release the skin, moving down the abdomen toward the groin area. You can also move it toward your side and, and then around to the groin if you want to, if that feels better to you. We'll do that as well, but um, just doing this helps. So now we're going to drain the arm. I've got a small table here. This step is really beneficial for those with lymphedema of the arm. It helps direct the fluid away from the affected arm, and there are several steps to this, so follow closely. First of all, the essential oils that are best for lymphedema are rosemary, juniper, cypress, copaiba, and lemon. As I showed you before, just get a little bowl, mix a few drops of um, uh, organic carrier oil like hemp seed or fractionated coconut. Dip your fingers in the treating hand into the bowl of the oils and rub them around with your thumb like I showed you. You'll want your arms bare for this procedure, but it's the middle of winter here right now, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stay covered. So um, we're going to put the fingertips into the bowl and rub uh, onto your forearm, sorry, palm down. Hopefully you can see, I may have to raise my hand, get it off the table here so you can see. So we're st gently stretching the skin from the wrist up to the elbow using essential oils along with the lymphatic drainage technique that you're using amplifies the effectiveness of this. So do this 10 or 15 times, up the arm, up to the elbow. Now we're gonna turn the arm over and go from the wrist, 
Gently stretching the skin from the rest up to the elbow. And do that 10 or 15 times. So now just above the elbow, you're gonna place your flat palm with fingers curving around the arm and gently stretching the skin, push up to the shoulder. So it's not a hard pressure, just a gentle stretching of skin. You can do it in one stroke, sliding, or in a series of movements. All right, now we're gonna move the, turn the palm over and do that same thing. And we can also go this way toward the lateral side of the arm. Stretch and release the skin from the inside of your arm to the top of your upper arm, all right? And then go back the other way. Now make sure that your hand is well covered with essential oils while you're doing this too, because like I say, it really amplifies this if you have oils that you're rubbing in. Okay. So, now we're going to gently stretch the skin to the top of the shoulder and just pushing upwards. It's a very short movement, just up to the top of the shoulder. And do that 10 or 15 times. Now, uh, for this next part, you're going to take your flat palm and put it at the top of your shoulder. Gently stretch and release the skin, making circles and moving towards your neck. Don't strain your wrist. Do this 10 or 15 times. And if it doesn't hurt your wrist, place your flat palm at the back of your shoulder. So, back here. And the, the movement is pulling the palm across the back of the shoulder toward the neck, stopping it just above the collarbone, right? Do that about 15 times. Now, lastly, um, massaging your swollen hands. If you have a problem with lymphedema in your hands, so using the essential oils, the treating hand is the flat palm on the back of the hand being treated. So you're gently stretching the skin on the back of your hand towards your forearm and then releasing. Do that about 15 times. And then do the same thing for the palm of the hand. And the fingers, each finger, just using two fingers Gently stretch and release the skin. And you can finish by massaging the entire finger. Do that about 10 times for each finger. And that's it. I hope you have found this uh, demonstration to be, I hope you, hope you have found it to be beneficial. <laughs> Don't worry if you can't remember it all. Just save this video to your device and you can come back to it anytime you like. I've shared this information with many of my coaching clients who were having problems with lymphedema and everyone has remarked how much it helped them, especially using the essential oils. One lady said that by adding in the essential oils, it was like lymphatic drainage on steroids. <laughs> so one other thing, if your lymphatics are really congested, you may feel tired for a day or two following this technique. That's because it takes time to break down the toxins that you've just released and it can make you feel more tired than usual. Uh, but you might not feel that way at all. Some are energized by doing this procedure. It just depends. So make sure to drink plenty of fluids and get enough rest if you do feel tired. So I've got lots more tips for you on how to stay well after a breast cancer diagnosis. Things that you won't learn anywhere else. Just sign up for my newsletters. The link to join is just below this video. This is all about me walking with you on your breast cancer journey. Your goal is to get well and thrive, and it's my goal to help you. Thanks for watching.